All right, I think we can go ahead and start, Mayor, whenever you're ready. Oh, hold on, we need to get everyone unmuted. Okay, Mayor, you could go ahead and start. Okay, welcome everyone and um, good evening and welcome to our June 9th, 2020 VISTA Consolidated Meeting. The meeting is now called to order. This meeting is being conducted utilizing teleconferencing and electronic means consistent with the State of California Executive Order 10-29-20. We're going to have a roll call by our city clerk, Kathy Valdez. I'm so happy. Great. Please state your name when, or state that you're here when I call your name. Mayor Ritter. Here. Deputy Mayor Rigby. Here. Councilmember Franklin. Here. Councilmember Green. Here. Councilmember Contreras. Present. All members are present. Also joining us are um, City Manager Patrick Johnson and City Attorney Daryl Piper. Okay. Um, um, in accordance with the Brown Act, I'd like to announce that as a result of convening simultaneous meetings, the members of the Buena Sanitation District will receive compensation of $147.75 for the district meeting pursuant to Buena Sanitation District Ordinance 2006-1. Uh, the next thing on our agenda is the approval of our agenda by our city manager, Patrick Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. There are no changes this evening to the agenda. Okay, we have two presentations this evening. And the first one is a proclamation declaring June 2020 as lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender pride month in the city of Vista. And I will go ahead and read the proclamation. And then I believe we might have a couple of, we have a couple of city clerk. We have a couple of um, letters. I have one. Yes, one, come on. Okay. So I'll read it first and then we'll go with that. So um, whereas our nation was founded on the principle of equal rights for all people, and the city of Vista supports the rights of every citizen to experience equality and freedom from discrimination, in June 1969, patrons and supporters of the Stonewall Inn in New York City staged a protest to resist harassment and discriminatory laws and practices against the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community. The protest 51 years ago marked the beginning of modern LGBT movement. Whereas LGBT pride celebrations take place around the world every June to commemorate the beginning of the Stonewall riots, including San Diego LGBT pride, that provides a significant boost to the region's economy with more than 200,000 attendees. Whereas VISTA has a diverse community that includes people of all ethnicities, religions, and professions, and whereas everyone should be able to live without fear of prejudice, discrimination, violence, and hatred based on race, religion, gender identity, or sexual orientation, and whereas the city council urges all VISTAs to respect and honor our diverse community and to celebrate and build a culture of inclusiveness and acceptance. Now, therefore, the mayor and members of the Vista City Council do hereby proclaim June 2020 as lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender pride month in the city of Vista. And then one thing before we start, I wanted to say that we actually have 135 um, different speaker slips and re communication requests. And so tonight I'm going to limit um, everyone to one minute for each communication. So I wanted to let you know that. And with that, we will go to our um, speakers for our speaker slips. Thank you. We have one comment from Cheris Krop. My name is Cheris and I live in District 2. I fully support the proclamation declaring June 2020 as Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Pride Month in the City of Vista. However, I urge City Council members to implore how we keep this community safe, which extends to Black and other minor minority communities as well. Talk is cheap and the LGBTQ plus community continues to advocate against police brutality and abuse. Yet Mayor Judy and other council members remain silent on this issue. I am asking the city council to defund the police and reinvest those dollars in housing, youth and other community programs. We do des we so desperately need safety and education, not police officers in schools. If you haven't read the Vista Sheriff's Department website recently, please acknowledge the violence undertones on this page and listen to the community who is demanding justice. Just begins with defunding the police. I'm urging all council members to make a proactive plan to divest funding from Vista Police Department and make a concrete plan for where those funds will be invested in the future. Thank you. Is that the only one? 
That's the only one I have, yes. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, then the next thing on our agenda, um, our city manager, Patrick Johnson, will provide a COVID-19 update. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have a brief update for you tonight. Um, I wanted to let everybody know that effective yesterday, the county announced that residents can utilize day camps, campgrounds, RV park, and outdoor recreation. So that was as of Monday. This was especially important on the day camp side because our day camps at Bringle Terrace uh, began yesterday. So it's a good thing that uh, everything was allowed. Uh, today, uh, beach cities were able to reopen their beach parking lots. So it's up to the, uh, the individual location if they wanna open them or not, but today they were allowed to open those. And starting on Friday, the county uh, will allow the following businesses to reopen. Uh, gyms and fitness facilities, uh, music, film, and TV production facilities, uh, community pools, and that includes condominium and HOA pools as well, hotels, Airbnbs, um, card rooms, and satellite wagering, racetracks, those type of things, uh, family entertainment, and then restaurant, bars, and wineries, and then lastly, museums, galleries, zoos, and aquariums are able to open on Friday. So it looks like the bulk of what we called, or what the governor called stage three businesses are able to reopen on Friday. So uh, moving in the right direction, definitely. And then um, yesterday, uh, our city facilities were reopened to the public uh, starting yesterday and everything uh, went very well at all facilities. Uh, no complaints and uh, we're all happy to get back to work and serve the public. So that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the next is our consent calendar and the recommendations on the following consent calendar will be enacted in one motion unless an item is removed from the calendar. Any member of the public may remove an item by making a request to the clerk secretary at public comments at cityavista.com. Items removed from the consent calendar will be considered immediately following adoption of the calendar. We have nine consent items this evening. Would any of the uh, city council members like to remove an item? Maybe you just wave at me and then I'll see if you item you want to remove. Councilmember Contreras. I'd like to remove item C1, please. Okay, and anyone else? Seeing no one else. And Mayor, we also yes. have um, from the public C3. Oh, Okay, with that, seeing no one, nothing else needs to be pulled, I would um, entertain a motion. I'll move that we uh, approve the balance of the consent calendar as presented. I'll second that. Okay, um, please cast your votes. If you please state your vote when I call your name. Mayor Ritter? Yes. Deputy Mayor Rigby? Aye. Councilmember Franklin? Aye. Councilmember Green? Aye. Councilmember Contreras? Aye. The consent calendar or the remaining consent calendar passes unanimously. Okay, then um, from there we'll go to um, item, item C1, which is the check register. And um, Councilmember Contreras, being you wanted that poll, do you have? Um, mm, sure. Thank you. Um, you know, in light of uh, all the conversation going on uh, regarding city budgets, uh, not just the city of Vista, but across the county, across the nation, um, I just wanted to make sure that, that I read out loud for the public record uh, some of the top vendors that we have. Uh, previously, I've focused on San Diego Gas and Electric. Um, it looks like for the month of March, we paid $89,688.31. Uh, but at the very top, um, our, our number one vendor at this point uh, is San Diego County Sheriff's Department. And for the months of December, January, February, the city of Vista uh, paid uh, for our law enforcement contract $6 million. $76,917.39. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure I stated that for the public. Um, and hopefully in the future, uh, there'll continue to be uh, interest from the public regarding our budget and we get more participation because I think that's really something that the public's asking for. Uh, so with that, I uh, move to accept the check register. Just a second. Second. 
Okay, the second by Councilman Rigby. Please cast, um, Ready? cast your votes. <laughs> <laughs> Please state your vote when I call your name. Mayor Ritter? Yes. <laughs> Deputy Mayor Rigby? Aye. Councilmember Franklin? Aye. Councilmember Green? Aye. Councilmember Contreras? Aye. That and passes unanimously. Okay, the next one that was pulled um, is item C3, which is a delegation of investment authority to the city treasurer for the fiscal year 20, 2020 and 2021 and revision of the city council policy 700-07 um, investment of city funds. I, I don't need to hear a report on this. So maybe you want to hear from the communications? Maybe city clerk, maybe we can. Okay. Um, so we have two um, public comments. The first is um, from Sheriff's Crop. The delegation of investment authority to the city treasurer for fiscal year 2020-21 needs to include a commitment to defunding the police and reinvesting funds into community programs. It is terrifying the amount of power and discretion officers have with virtually zero accountability. Racist policing practices that have no place in VISTA, and if you read the VISTA Sheriff's Department website, it is evident that racial profiling and the heavy enforcement of low-level crimes is at the heart of how this policing department operates. I urge all city council members to commit themselves to defunding the police and working with community leaders to create a safer community for all VISTA residents. Thank you. And the um, second is from Kyle Prop. Hello, my name is Kyle, and I'm a resident of District 2. The delegation of investment authority to the city treasurer for fiscal year 2020-21 must explicitly include a commitment to defunding the police. Specific requests tied to defunding the police include funding mental health experts and social workers to respond to 5150 calls, not police, and to remove police officers from schools to fund much needed school counselors and social workers on campus. Please make a proactive plan to divest funding from the Vista Police Department and make concrete plans for where those funds will be reinvested in the future. The police unjustly target black and brown communities and are the biggest threat to American society today. We need to protect the citizens of Vista by reinvesting dollars in programs that are desperate need of funding, namely housing, health care, good jobs, healthy food, education, and free public transit. Thank you. That please completes public comment. Okay, I don't um, just, any, do I have any council members that might have any comments on this? And seeing none, I would go ask for a motion to approve. Madam Mayor, I'll move that we approve C3 as presented. I'll second. I have a motion by Deputy Mayor and a second by Councilmember Green. If you'll please state your vote when I call your name, Mayor Ritter. Yes. Deputy Mayor Rigby. Aye. Councilmember Franklin. Aye. Councilmember Green. Aye. Councilmember Contreras. Aye. That didn't pass this unanimously. Okay, that brings us to our public hearings. We have five public hearings this evening. Uh, public hearing um, number one, the first public hearing is to receive testimony regarding the vacation of easements at Sports Park Way. So the public hearing is now open. Our right-of-way agent, Kim Cruz, will be providing the staff report. Yeah. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. For your consideration this evening, staff presents a resolution to vacate easements for Park Access Road, Public Utilities, and Temporary Slope on the entry section. Sorry, there we go. Um, was everyone able to hear me? Just yes. Okay, great. Um, pardon me. Uh, Vacate the easements for Park Access Road, Public Utilities, and Temporary Slope on the entry section of Sports Parkway off of Oceanside Boulevard that lies within the city of Oceanside. The city of Vista acquired these easements in 2010 for public access to the Vista Sports Park. Now that a new development is planned for the Oceanside land west of Sports Parkway, the city of Oceanside will be accepting this section of Sports Parkway into its public street system. Therefore, the city of Vista can vacate its easements as they are no longer necessary for continued public access. This concludes the staff presentation and I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Do any of our council members have questions on this? You know, I have, I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. 
Okay, Council Member Contreras. Thank you. Um, you know, I just want to uh, let people, uh, the neighbors uh, that live around Swartz Parkway, um, to know that uh, us moving forward with, uh, you know, this item doesn't mean that the improvements that we were able to get uh, to reduce trash uh, and littering um, by using K-Rail, by doing uh, red curbing, by putting a sign up saying no parking, um, those will remain intact. Uh, once the city of Oceanside moves forward with their development, um, it is my understanding uh, that there is no conflict uh, with some of the signs that we put up. Um, so I just want to reassure uh, the neighborhood around uh, Sports Park, um, that the improvements that we made uh, will be staying up. So you don't have to worry about people uh, parking there and throwing trash. So it will remain. And that's all. That's all my comments for right now. Okay. Um, so I see no other comments from our co oh, Council Member Green. I just recommend that we close the public hearing and accept uh, staff's recommendation. Okay. Second. So Okay, I have a motion and a second. So with that, um, we have to take a short recess for public comment to receive. So we have what, a three minute recess? Yes, three minutes.
Okay, Mayor, we could go ahead and get started whenever you're ready. Okay, we are now back in session. The opportunity to provide public comment on this item is now closed. Um, City Clerk Valdez, please share the public comments received. We did not receive any public comments on this item. Okay, um, so I've asked if the council has any further comments. Anybody have any further comments? I don't see anybody waving at me. So I'm going to assume we have a motion. I think was Council Member Green made the motion, right? Yes, do I need to remake the motion, Madam Mayor? Do you need, I don't know, do we make? Um, no, just, okay. You okay? And then we have a second by Council Member Contreras, right? Was it right or no? Council Member Franklin. Franklin. Franklin, oh, second by Council Member Franklin. Okay, so um, please call the all right, if you could please state your vote when I call your name, Mayor Ritter. Yes. Deputy Mayor Rigby. Deputy Mayor Rigby. She's muted. She's muted. All right, we'll go on to Council Member Franklin. Aye. Council Member Green. Aye. Council Member Contreras. Aye. All right, and back to Deputy Mayor Rigby. Aye. All right, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, that takes us to our second public hearing. This public hearing is to receive testimony regarding the collection of delinquent 2019 weed abatement charges. The public hearing is now open, and our Fire Chief Ned Vanderpool will provide the staff report. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. Uh, staff requests the Council approve the collection of the delinquent 2019 weed abatement charges. Notices to clear property were sent to 1,087 properties, and two of those properties were not cleared by their owners. The city hired a contractor to clear those two properties after repeated notices were sent out to them. The delinquent charges include the cost of the abatement as well as the administrative fee. This concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions. Okay, does, does the council have any questions? Madam Mayor. Council Member Green. I'm sorry, I was just gonna make sure that I'm correct in saying the way we collect this is this will be a lien on their property and upon change of ownership is when we'll actually collect the money owed to us. Is that the, the way that we go about collecting these fees? That is correct. It's added to the property tax rule. Awesome. Thank you. And if I could, Mayor, it's actually when they pay their property taxes, they'll they'll go ahead and pay it. Okay, great. So it doesn't have to do a change of ownership, but actually the bill comes directly from the county assessor per se. That's correct. Perfect. Thank you. I have any other questions? Madam Mayor? Yes, Councilman Franklin. I make a motion that we close the public hearing and approve the item as proposed by staff. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. And so um, we'll take a short recess um, for public comment to be received. And any comments can be emailed to public comments at cityavista.com.
Okay, Mayor, we could go ahead and start whenever you're ready. Do we have a report? Am I unmuted? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're back in session. Um, the opportunity to provide public comment is, on this item is now closed. Our city clerk, Valdez, please share the public comments received. We received one comment from Jocelyn Allers. Hello, I'm writing to ask how weeds are abated in Vista and if it is by it is via the use via the use of herbicides. We can please consider using less environmentally problematic methods. Thank you, Jocelyn. Okay. Um, does anybody want to answer that? I can address that. Uh, property owners clear the weeds on their own. Uh, generally, it's with a weed whack or a mower or something uh, along those lines. Okay. I have uh, just a, a comment real quick too, a follow-up on that. Uh, so if we, um, Chief Vanderpool, if we, uh, in the case of the owner and not uh, clearing it and we contract out, it is do we know how the contractor is removing the weeds? I'm assuming they're not using goats because I haven't seen <laughs> you know, any goats removing, but. We, uh, we go out there with the contractor okay, so and they, come uh, up with a plan. Okay, can, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Uh, generally. Like, a, what's a, a usual process? Uh, generally a weed whacker and a lawnmower is, uh, is what we use. Okay. It's Thanks. it's clearing it's clearing and grubbing the land versus spraying um, anything on it. Exactly. We've seen no further comments. Councilman Franklin. Oh, okay, Councilman Franklin. I was just going to point out that uh, the, I think the weeds that we're abating are probably four feet uh, and taller and create a uh, fire hazard, and so due to their size. Uh, and the fact that they're already grown, um, it's not a prevention of growth operation, it's a clearing of dead growth. Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have we have a motion if nobody else, oh, I'm sorry, Deputy Mayor Rigby. Um, you're muted, Deputy Mayor. I don't know who keeps muting me. It's not me doing that. Um, never mind. Thank you. My question was answered. Oh, okay. Anyone else? Seeing no more hands, I will say we have a motion by um, and a second by Deputy Mayor Rigby. So please. Oh. <laughs> I want to see cast your votes, and I know that's not how I got to read down here. So please have us. Say our votes. <laughs> All right. Please state your vote when I call your name. Mayor, Mayor Ritter? Yes. Deputy Mayor Rigby? Aye. Councilmember Franklin? Aye. Councilmember Green? Aye. Councilmember Contreras? Aye. Item passes unanimously. Okay, that takes us to public hearing number three, which is levy of delinquent fiscal year 2019-20 property related administrative citation. And um, the public hearing is now open. And Finance Director Mike Silvio will uh, be providing the staff report. Good evening, Council and uh, Mayor. Uh, this is an annually recurring item to place prior uncollectible administrative citations on the property tax roll. It requires two steps to complete it. And the first step was completed by Council on March 24th which facilitated tonight's public hearing. It's important to note that all of the amounts that are included in Exhibit 3 were incurred prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. There are 24 affected property owners with citations that total $39,935. The affected property owners were not notified by certified mail of this public hearing. So with that, it's staff's recommendation to open, conduct, and close the public hearing and approve the item's resolution. Okay, do I have, is it, any of the council have any questions on this? Madam Mayor? Yes. Uh, I just wanna thank staff for their good work. Um, I know a lot of us council members are involved in these um, 
various code enforcement issues, um, sometimes personally, generally, uh, in almost every regard, our uh, code enforcement team is serving the interest of the surrounding neighbors to make sure that everybody in the city can enjoy their property. Um, and it's uh, a shame, but we do have some problem property owners who do not respond and address uh, their their uh, code violations. Um, and I know that the city gives property owners every chance to rectify these uh, items without citation. Uh, but unfortunately, sometimes we have to enforce the code uh, through the use of these citations. So with that, uh, I would uh, just again thank our code enforcement team for the great work they do keeping the city looking clean. And I would uh, make a motion to close the public hearing and approve the item as uh, proposed by staff. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. Deputy Mayor. Okay, so um, then we will take, I don't see any other speakers looking. Um, so we're going to take a short recess to allow the public to, um, for any comments that received from the public. Comments may be emailed to public comments at cityofvista.com. We'll take a three minute recess. Okay, Mayor, if we've got everyone ready, we could go ahead and start when you're ready. Hey, are we all back? 
we are now back in session. The opportunity to provide public comment on this item is now closed. Uh, City Clerk Valdez, please share the public comments received. We do not receive any comments on this item. Okay, so um, I, do I have any other further comments from our council? I'm looking to see any, I don't see any, anybody responding to that. So I have a, a motion by House Member Franklin and a second by Deputy Mayor Rigby. So um, please conduct our roll call vote. All right, please state your vote and call your name. Mayor Ritter. Yes. Deputy Mayor Rigby. Yes. Council Member Franklin. Aye. Council Member Green. Aye. Council Member Contreras. Aye. The item passes unanimously. Okay, that takes us to our fourth public hearing. This public hearing is to receive um, testimony regarding levy of assessments for the fiscal year 2020 and 2021. The public hearing is now open. Finance Director Mike Sylvia will um, be providing a staff report. Mike, your mic's on or muted. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, this is good evening, Mayor and Council. This is uh, an annually recurring item like the last one. However, this this one requires three steps to complete. Uh, the first step was completed on April 28th when Council authorized the preparation of annual engineer's reports for the landscape and lighting district number one, street maintenance district number one, and the South Melrose landscape maintenance district. On May 12th, Council approved those engineer's reports and ordered tonight's public hearing. The assessment rates in all the districts are equal to the rates of the last several years and required noticing of the public hearing was provided via city website posting and newspaper publication on May 26th and June 2nd. Staff's recommendation is to open, conduct, and close the public hearing and approve the three resolutions. I'm available for any questions council or public might have. Okay, so does the council have any questions? Looking, I don't see any. So um, with that, I will um, let me take a short recess and then um, to allow for public comment to be received. And then um, comments can be emailed to public comments at cityofvista.com and we will take a short recess, three minute recess, and then we'll be back.
Okay, Mayor, you could go ahead and start whenever you're ready. Okay, we're now back in session. The opportunity to provide public comment on this item is now closed. Uh, City Clerk Valdez, please share the public comments received. We did not receive any comments. Okay, so um, I, I'm asking my council members if they have any further comments on this. If not, I would um, look for a motion and a second. See no one doing that. I'll I'll make a motion. <laughs> I need a second. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll second. 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 Okay. No, Councilman Franklin, thank you. Okay, one second. So um, so then um, please um, please cast your votes. <laughs> I want to say that I got to get back here and read what it, exactly what it says. I don't see it, but please, Kathy. Okay. I'll conduct the vote. Um, if you please state your vote when I call your name, Mayor Ritter. Yes. Deputy Mayor Rigby. Aye. Councilmember Franklin. Aye. Councilmember Green. Aye. Councilmember Contreras. Aye. And it passes unanimously. That is a roll call vote. I keep I keep forgetting to say conduct the roll call. <laughs> so now, public hearing number five. Here we go. The final public hearing is to receive testimony regarding proposed um, substitute. Substantial, I haven't got my glasses on, hold on, amendment to the 2019-2020 Community Development Block Grant Annual Action Plan to accept CARES Act funding. Substantial amendment, that's what it said. He's now open. Housing Manager Sylvia Solis Daniels will be providing a staff report. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The city will receive an allocation of $629,513 in CDBG CV funding from the CARES Act to support the coronavirus response in local communities. Next slide. The current slide outlines the proposed use of funds as follows. Emergency rental assistance, $200,000 and technical assistance for $30,000. This will provide rental assistance for VISTA households experiencing a loss of income directly related to COVID-19. An RFP will be released to select a provider to manage this program. The nonprofit provider will be responsible for vetting rental assistance applications to evaluate financial need and program eligibility. The rental assistance program could be contracted in coordination with the prevention funds from the strategic plan to address homelessness, which will offer similar assistance for homeless prevention. Both programs would provide rental assistance, but require different income eligibility requirements as CDBG funds are limited to HUD defined low and moderate income residents. We will select a provider and return to council on August 11th with a contract for approval. Rental assistance funds for the public would be available shortly after contract approval. Food distri distribution for 317,000 will provide meals to homebound seniors through Meals on Wheels and through the City Senior Nutrition Program to support food security for disabled and low-income VISTA seniors in response to COVID-19. Fair housing services for 10,000 will support a growing need to provide fair housing counseling services to VISTA residents directly related to COVID-19. And finally, administration for 71,000 is also included for program monitoring evaluation, reporting, and financial accounting for city staff who oversee CDBG activities. This concludes my presentation. I'm available for questions. Okay, so um, I can't see everyone. There we go. Madam Mayor. Yes, Deputy Mayor Rigby. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I wanted to say thank you to, uh, to uh, Ms. Solius Daniels for this staff report and for the great job that you and your department did in putting together the programming, the dollar amounts, identifying the best partners in the community to work with. Um, this whole situation has been difficult at best for all of us, more so for our seniors and those who have lost their jobs and are in dire straits regarding food insecurity as well as um, apartments, housing, et cetera. So I appreciate all the work that you did on this. I think the way that it is um, divided among the different organizations throughout our community was well done. So I wanna say thank you for that. I appreciate that. 
very much. And with that, Madam Mayor, I would go ahead and move to close the public hearing and approve uh, this item as it's been presented to us. Thank you. Okay, Councilman Green. I just had one question. I love the program. I love everything you guys did. As far as our Vista residents are concerned, how quickly are these funds going to be made available um, to them? Because I know we're getting ready, hopefully, to come out of this. Um, or, or do we have a time frame set where we say, hey, by the 1st of July, you can point in the right direction? Or what are the time frames on that is my only question. Sure. For the senior nutrition program, and Meals on Wheels funding um, can be supported following this meeting. And for the rental assistance program, funding will be available following the final contract in August. So as soon as um, we have that final contract in August. Okay, so the funds will be available for our citizens to apply for sometime in August is when it'll be available. Uh, yes, following um, our first council meeting in August. Okay, thank you so much for the information. I appreciate it. Contreras. Uh, yeah, you know what? Thank you. Um, I just have a question regarding Legal Aid Society. Um, it says, you know, fair housing services for residents who are unable to pay their rent due to COVID 19, large influx when courts reopen, uh, allocated funding is $10,000. Uh, the $10,000, what do we anticipate? Uh, we can do we have an idea of how many individuals that could help? Is that just an additional, um, I, I, I would like to know a little bit more about it because I just some questions uh, regarding the $10,000. Sure. Um, so Legal Aid Foundation will support over 100 families um, with that um, funding. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. No problem. So, anybody else? I don't see. Did I have a second? I, um, Deputy Mayor made a motion. Do I have a second on that? I'll second it if there's no second. I believe Franklin, Councilmember Franklin, seconded it. Oh, okay, okay. All right, then um, we will conduct our roll call vote. Actually, we need to take co public what? comment. So, quick break. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't do that. Okay. We'll take a brief break for public comment, and you can, you can make that at um, city of, uh, public comments at cityofvista.com. Thank you, Mayor.
Okay, Mayor, you could go ahead and start whenever you're ready. Okay, we're now back in session. The opportunity to provide public comment on this item is now closed. Um, City Clerk Valdez, please share the public comments received. We did not receive any public comments. Okay, are there any additional comments or questions from our council? Seeing none, I have the motion by Deputy Mayor Rigby and a second by Councilmember Franklin. So um, please conduct our roll call vote. All right, please state your vote when I call your name. Mayor Ritter? Yes. Deputy Mayor Rigby? Aye. Councilmember Franklin? Aye. Councilmember Green? Aye. Councilmember Contreras? Aye. The item passes unanimously. Next thing on our agenda, we have one discussion item this evening. Um, it's Independence Day fireworks display. And Councilmember Franklin has asked for this item to be placed on the agenda. So I'm gonna ask him to introduce the item. Well, I wanna thank uh, Deputy Mayor Rigby, uh, who I believe joins me in uh, adding this to the agenda. Um, thank you. We uh, all had discussions uh, with our city manager about whether or not to move forward with our Independence Day celebration and our fireworks uh, display. And uh, I, I know that uh, I certainly feel that this is a time more important than any other for us to move forward with celebrating Independence Day, uh, demonstrate our patriotism and uh, bring our community together through this important uh, display. Um, that said, you know, I would like to propose, uh, and I've asked staff to prepare some options. Um, I think clearly in light of the uh, public health regulations where they stand today, reopening the Moonlight Theater uh, is not an option. However, and I'll ask uh, Mr. Johnson to elaborate on the exact numbers, but I think we have roughly between seven and 8,000 people come into Greenville Terrace Park. Uh, only about 1,100 of those are uh, folks that are coming to the moonlight. The rest are finding a, a patch of grass somewhere in our beautiful 78 acre um, Bringle Terrace Park. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we tried to nail down and really don't have a definition of is what is a gathering. Uh, as long as social distancing is observed within our, again, 78 acres, we have this massive area for people to spread out and enjoy this display. And uh, though the, the residents of the fourth district that I represent uh, cannot see the fireworks from their home, about a third of the residents uh, in the north part of the city can see it. And it's a, a really uh, important celebration for our city. And so I thought it was important for us. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Deputy Mayor Rigby. Uh, her and I have both been reaching out to sponsors of our fireworks shows in the past and asking them if they would continue to sponsor uh, even in this uh, trying time when perhaps they won't receive the same recognition that they might have, uh, but we're appealing to their patriotism and asking them to continue to help us underwrite this uh, important program. So with that, uh, uh, after we've heard from uh, the other members of the council, Madam Mayor, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Johnson to explain to us uh, some of the options that he's come up with and perhaps uh, make a recommendation about how we might be able to accommodate. We typically have about 900 vehicles that uh, come into Bringle Terrace. I think we could accommodate, say maybe up to 600 vehicles. We've reduced the number so that we know we don't have the same uh, density of crowd. We're not gonna have the same amount of revenue or be able to accommodate the same number of people. Uh, but it, it is, you know, this is our nation's, uh, the, you know, the celebration of our independence and our, and our birth as a nation uh, and I just, think it couldn't be more important that we continue uh, and find this sense of normalcy. We're opening bars, uh, we're opening all kinds of institutions. Um, certainly we've seen large gatherings, uh, you know, recently uh, of many hundreds of people. Um, I trust our residents to gather. I trust them to follow uh, the social distancing protocols, to wear their masks. Uh, but to come and to enjoy their families together, uh, you know, to pitch a, a blanket at Bringle Terrace and enjoy uh, our city's fireworks display. So thank you very much. Um, Deputy Mayor Rigby, did you wanna say something too? Uh, sure, thank you, Madam Mayor. I wanna say thank you to Councilman Franklin. 
I think he and I both started coming at this at the same time. And uh, I think um, city manager probably had us both doing, getting both of us from different sides. So um, I appreciate what Councilman Franklin said. And I agree that um, of all the things that have been canceled, this is not one of them that should be canceled. We need to continue with our Independence Day celebrations. I think as was already said, um, now more than ever, it's very important for us as Americans to come out and, and really celebrate who we are. And, and as a recognition of wh where we are right now, where we've come in the last couple of months, in addition to where we have come in the last 243 years. So um, I appreciate very much to have this discussion because I think it's very important as well. So I too uh, would like to hear what the city manager was able to put together for us. So thank you. Uh, Councilmember Contreras, do you want to add to that? You know, actually I add to that. Um, I am supportive of uh, this discussion 100%. I think this is an important discussion. I really um, want to thank uh, Councilmember Franklin and Deputy Mayor Rigby for bringing this up. It's, um, you know, I've just been low key asking people, hey, um, and it just, it seems like the community understands uh, that this is a good thing. Um, as long as we're not, you know, we're not going to cram everybody in into Bringle Terrace Park. Um, that's not something that I would be supportive of. But um, this is tradition, um, you know, and ever since I've been here in Vista my entire life, I, I've lived on the north side. So regardless of where I go, I could see the fireworks. But, you know, uh, Council Member Franklin did make a, a very important point that uh, some of our residents that are further away um, aren't able to see it. And so, uh, you know, if we're going to be funding um, and getting donations uh, to do a celebration, I think it's paramount for us to uh, kind of have like a camping situation, um, not for, you know, hours and hours, uh, but to look at Brinkle Terrace, uh, possibly, you know, how the beach or uh, Lake Poway or something like that would function, right? We can section off, uh, you know, areas where, where people can gather um, safely. Uh, but I'm 100% supportive of um, having a, a firework display. And, and um, you know, we do have a long history uh, in our nation celebrating, uh, you know, the freedoms uh, that so many people have uh, selflessly uh, fought for. Um, and I would be remiss, um, uh, Brianna Taylor, she recently had a birthday and she is not able to celebrate with us. Um, so, you know, um, I think we need to be mindful in this time too, the individuals who have been taken from us um, and the justice that still needs to happen um, because Black Lives Matter. And so, I just wanted to say that as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm 100% supportive. I think people should be uh, able to utilize Bringle Terrace Park. Um, and even though I can see the fireworks from my house, I, I might be one of those individuals that wants to go camping. So uh, outside of that, I have no further comments, but I am supportive of us uh, having the celebration. Okay, and um, Member Green? <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say that I, uh, number one, I thank uh, Deputy Mayor Rigby and Councilmember Franklin for putting this on the agenda. Um, Bring on Terrace Park, super close to my house. I actually get to see him from my backyard. Um, I've low key and high key been asking everybody what they think about the 4th of July as well. And uh, the community seems to be fired up about it. It seems to be something that can really bring us together, um, you know, celebrating our nation and, uh, you know, really loving on our community as a whole. And I think that's something that we definitely need to do. I do like uh, Councilmember Franklin's idea of limiting the amount of parking. If we know typically we can get 900 cars in there, I think, you know, limiting that to about 66% would definitely help, um, you know, cut down the congestion in there. But then again, I definitely, uh, you know, agree with him as well that our citizens, uh, you know, will be able to know what's best for them and they'll be able to take the necessary precautions um, for social distancing. I don't want to be policing that too much uh, within our park. I want it to be a day people can celebrate, but also a day where they can spend time with their families and, uh, you know, kind of police their own uh, 
uh, gathering per se. Um, so this is something I support 100%. I appreciate you guys getting funds for it from our previous donors. I think that's an amazing thing to do uh, from a community standpoint to uh, you know have outside sources help fund this. I think that's great. And uh, I'd, I'd love to hear what the city manager has to say, but quite frankly, I'm good with opening up the park and uh, having our 4th of July celebration. We can do it without the moonlight. So maybe that's the area we close off in the, you know, 1100 people that don't come and, uh, you know, we move forward. So I'm, I'm 100% supportive of it. Let's hear the city manager's plan and see where we can go and make this happen. Thank you. Okay. And I just want to say one thing. I, I always celebrate the fourth and think about my father who uh, was a pilot in World War II and died at 38 years of old when he was old and uh, not very old, actually. I used, to, I used to, when I was young and he was there, I used to think that was old, but then I got to be 38 and I realized how young it really was. So anyway, so I always think about him and when I celebrate the fourth and what he fought for our freedom. And so, um, so with that, I'll put it to Patrick Johnson and our city manager and let him tell us what he's got up his sleeve. <laughs> Thank you. As mentioned, I was asked to provide some options and I just wanted to let you know that currently within the county, uh, there are three cities going forward with their fireworks display on Independence Day. They are El Cajon and Santee and Poway. And El Cajon, Santee and Poway, or El Cajon and Santee are doing a no gathering. They're shooting off fireworks from different locations in their city uh, for people to watch. Poway is shooting off fireworks and they are actually allowing cars to come into Poway Lake and enjoy uh, the celebration and get out of your car, but a certain number of cars to go into Poway Lake. And before I provide the options, I do just want to preface it, which I, I do have a little bit of a concern if we're the only city along Highway 78 North County that is having fireworks. It does mean that it's possible that it might put a strain on our neighborhoods and environment from other people from outside of the area coming in. So that is a concern from a law enforcement and a traffic perspective, but I will get to the options because I know all of you are supportive of fireworks. Uh, one thing I do want to say too is that Star 94.1 uh, let us know yesterday that they will broadcast uh, the songs and synchronize the music to our fireworks. So uh, that will continue to happen if we go forward. So council options. Yes, Councilman Franklin. Uh, just, I just want to preface our thinking on uh, demand. Uh, as we think about limiting the number of people into the park, uh, why don't we open the first hour that the park allows vehicles in, if, if we decide to do that, uh, to people with a VISTA uh, ID. Uh, and then, you know, if we open the park at five, from five to six, uh, you know, it's it Vista ID. And if we put a limit on it, we fill it up with Vista, so be it. Uh, and then, uh, you know, perhaps after 6 p.m., we allow folks uh, from, from other places. But perhaps we honor our residents. Uh, uh, it's their city, their tax dollars, uh, their park. Uh, maybe we could provide uh, first crack at entering the park to them. Well, I'll go through the options, and you guys can give uh, all the feedback you want. Um, the first option is obviously to have fireworks at Pringle Terrace Park. Uh, this is an area that we've traditionally done the fireworks at, the only area that I'm aware of. We have pre-plans from a fire perspective, from a fallout area of the fireworks, so we're very comfortable with this park. Um, that's where we've done it before. Uh, under this option, option number one, uh, we would have the fireworks display, and we would propose that there'd be no gathering. So there wouldn't be anybody at the park, but the fireworks would go off and people could uh, see it from their home or from adjacent areas that they could get to. Uh, under this uh, option, we would need to have public works. We would need to have fire, obviously. We'd need to have sheriff and um, they could perform the life safety, the traffic uh, control, as well as the patrolling of the area. We would install a fence going along Vail Terrace from the detention basin all the way to the senior center. And we would make sure that no cars or pedestrians would come into the park. Um, so that's option one. Uh, it would cost approximately $56,000. The bulk of that cost is $38,000 for the fireworks show, which we're under contract for if we want to have it this year or next year. Um, if the city council wants to go forward, which it sounds like you do, this would be the staff preferred option. So option one, no gathering, fireworks, $56,000. The second option would be to have the display as listed under option one, 
uh, but would be to allow a certain number of gatherings within the park. And we would propose that, as Councilman Franklin said, uh, typically we get about 900 cars that come into the park. And we think if we physically distance them, uh, we could probably get somewhere around the neighborhood of 300 cars in the park. We'd assign them a space, as was mentioned earlier, like a camping space or you know some sort of space that we would block off and we would label them. And we would have uh, passenger cars and passenger SUVs come into the park. They would purchase a ticket ahead of time. So we would pre-sell all of the car spots. And um, so it would be those people that came into the park and they can get out of their car. They have their own area. They can put out their chairs, whatever they want to do to watch the fireworks show. Uh, the fireworks go off at nine o'clock. So we would uh, probably recommend opening the park up around seven o'clock and going forward with the vehicles in there and um, allowing those people to access it. So option two under that scenario would be approximately $58,000. So you have option one, $56,000, no gatherings, limited gatherings with cars and option two for $58,000. So the third and the final option uh, being presented today is obviously uh, was discussed was what we've done in the past. And that is to open the gates to the park at seven in the morning and allow vehicular access uh, into the park. We typically charge a fee of $15 per vehicle uh, and allow pedestrians in the park to set up. Um, we would not recommend opening up the Moonlight Amphitheater. Uh, typically we get somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, nine to 11,000 folks into the park and in the amphitheater it consists of about 1,100 people. Um, but under this option, because of the physical distancing issues uh, and the uh, in the amphitheater, as most of you know, where you see the fireworks from is typically on the north end of the uh, amphitheater. And it's very difficult to social distance 1,100 people. So we would just uh, prefer not to open that, but allow the park to be open. Um, and it would be an all day uh, event. We would allow uh, households to self-manage themselves in terms of the physical distancing issue. And um, our total cost for this is estimated at 68,000. So option one, no gatherings, 50, 56,000. Option two, limited gathering from cars, 58,000. And then option three would be uh, the parks open with the exception of the amphitheater. Uh, and we charge for parking and it would be $68,000. Um, that is the three options that we came up with. Uh, and we're happy to entertain any questions. I know Councilman Franklin, you brought up a resident option and it would just depend on what option you were, um, you were looking at. Uh, if you were, if the council was in favor on option three, maybe there's a way that we could sell, uh, pre-sell, uh, obviously tickets for cars to come in, uh, and, at least know that a certain number of those folks are gonna be residents coming into the park. But with that, I'll turn it back to the council and then field any questions you might have. Madam Mayor, if I might. Um, yeah, actually the idea of uh, the pre-sales for the tickets, I mean, we could use Vistix uh, online to sell the tickets, couldn't we? Yeah, that's currently how we do it uh, now. So, so what we could do, we have, uh, I don't know, roughly uh, 28 days or something. Um, what we could do, uh, as soon as we're able to open ticket sales, we could open ticket sales to Vista families um, and we could allow maybe 10 days uh, for Vista families to purchase uh, their vehicular uh, entrance to the park. And then after 10 days, we could open it up uh, to all comers, uh, regardless of geography. Um, I, I would recommend going to 600 cars. I think if we reduce one third um, of the uh, of the number of people coming in, I think we're going to be just fine uh, with that. Uh, we do have 78 acres uh, to spread out. It is a very large park, and yes, we will have to cordon off some areas. Moonlight would be closed. The softball fields would be closed because that's where the uh, fireworks in the fallout area. Uh, but it's a very large park. And I think 600 people, 600 cars, uh, I think we could accommodate that number safely. I know it's a little bit more than staff would prefer, but, um, you know, I I mean, it would obviously be ideal if we could do a northern uh, show and a southern show in the city so everybody could watch in their backyard. That'd be great. 
but that's a lot more expensive and it's not fiscally prudent to do that. Uh, so look, uh, you know, the people I represent can't see it from their backyard. Joe, I like all beef Franks. I'll be there at the seven o'clock. Uh, but you know, the people in the other parts of the city deserve a valid option to get into the park, exercise, uh, some, you know, their patriotism, uh, get some fresh air. And again, I trust those people to, uh, to not form a gathering, uh, little side note, you know, Patrick and I have been going rounds about exactly what is a gathering. I asked him, I said, you know, 78 acres, if we had one person on each acre, is that a gathering? Uh, I, you know, there is no straight answer on what a gathering uh, constitutes. So, you know, I trust people uh, to use good sense. Obviously, uh, a lot of us are returning to work. We're going back to bars and restaurants. Uh, you know, we're, we're uh, patronizing our small businesses again. And, uh, you know, and my, my dear mother, uh, who's 67 years old, has not left home yet. Uh, and, and, you know, nor should she. Uh, if, if you are uh, in the danger zone age and you have comorbidity, uh, you know, you're encouraged to continue to quarantine until the rest of us uh, go out and establish the herd immunity that's going to make it safer when you finally leave your home. Because the rest of us, if we're going to be exposed, have been exposed and have built some immunity. Uh, so, you know, I, I, that's important. Uh, we're, we're not, uh, you know, we're not encouraging people who are uh, potentially in the danger zone to, you know, to frequent uh, these events or, or to leave their quarantine. But uh, for those young, healthy families that want to go out and enjoy this, I trust them. So I'm going to make a motion that we allow 600 cars uh, and that we ask the city staff to provide a 10 day advanced sale opportunity for Vista households uh, with Vistex if it's uh, practicable. And I, I think we can figure out how to do that. So that would be my motion. I would second that motion. Are you also asking to open up the park to every everyone then? The car no, just, just 600, 600 uh, passenger vehicles, uh, no buses, no, uh, no large passenger vehicles, no pedestrian traffic. Uh, you know, our private conversations, uh, Mr. Johnson made a good argument about um, pedestrian traffic and there's some safety and other reasons why uh, limiting pedestrian traffic and allowing vehicular traffic would, would make the most sense. So uh, I want to stick with staff's recommendation on that. So you're, are you talking about, fen you're going to fence off the park then? Is that what you're re recommending? Fencing the park uh, along the 600? I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Mr. Johnson on whether or not we need to fence the park. Uh, I think they're already... Most of it is kind of already access controlled uh, for pedestrians, except for, uh, you know, the, the major points of entry, isn't it? It sounds like you're recommending uh, options with some different changes to the for vehicles. Is that correct? Did you say option? Option. Uh, option I, I'm option. saying option. Go ahead. I was going to say it sounded like you were saying option two. Um, with just regulating cars coming in up to 600 with no pedestrian traffic. Is that correct? Well, was was option three going to include pedestrians? Yeah, option three had pedestrians and it included anybody that wanted to come in uh, to the park. Were we going to charge for pedestrian entrance or just vehicular entrance? No, we've never charged for pedestrian entrance. Uh, we, we just charge for vehicles and typically it's $15 a vehicle. Well, is it is it practicable to limit uh, the uh, the pedestrians? I mean, one of the other considerations that we've been discussing here is, you know, is the funds that we raise from the vehicles that come in. Uh, those vehicles are helping us defray the cost of the uh, celebration, and so they're providing an important uh, service to everybody because their patronage is allowing us, you know, to defray the cost. So, uh, you know, I do kind of want to prioritize those folks. It also, you know, provides a little bit uh, more of a controllable situation. But, uh, Mr. Johnson, what do you what do you think? I mean, I, I if we can accommodate people on foot, I'd love to do it. It also would would limit the total number of people in the park if we don't allow pedestrians, uh, which would serve to increase the social distancing. So, um, yeah, I think from a staff standpoint and from a staffing standpoint, uh, we would prefer option two over option three. Uh, certainly limits the number of people in the park. Uh, it's easier for us to control the park and the and the atmosphere that will be created. Can you run us through uh, what option two would look like with a 600 vehicle limit? Sure. So option two with 600 vehicles, we'd pre-sell uh, as many of those as we could. Uh, we'd set up defined areas where they'd park 
And then um, we would allow that many cars to come in the park and they could um, they could enjoy the park in the evening hours and uh, see the fireworks from their area. That would be the staff perspective. Um, you mentioned that, you know, there's over 70 acres uh, to the park. There's plenty of areas to spread out. Um, that may be an option that you want to recommend that you allow 600 cars in and those cars can spread out through the park where they think the most advantageous spot is. The one, the one issue with that, though, is there are certain people that um, want to maintain that physical distance. And so we, are, we do have some concerns with people that uh, may not want to, may not uh, be interested in the physical distancing to get the, the most appropriate best vantage point spot. And then it creates conflict. Um, and our plan was not to necessarily become the physical distancing police and walk around with a, a measuring tape, but rather, as you said, let, let adults be adults and, and figure it out. I think we need to include verbiage uh, on the page. We sell the tickets where we let people know that it's going to be uh, self-enforced and we expect people to behave responsibly. Uh, those who have concerns might consider skipping this year's celebration instead of watching it from a backyard of a neighbor. Um, but, uh, you know, folks are, folks are going to be making their own uh, responsible decisions here. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm with the uh, regulations that you've uh, suggested. Uh, that, that would be my motion with the 600 cars. So the 600 cars, I have a question. So the 600 cars, would the, then would you mark off spaces next to them so they could put their chairs and things there? Or are they just going to park and then everybody's going to wander around and find their own little spot? So what we, what we proposed was we would mark off spaces for those cars to park in and then space for them to take lawn chairs out or, you know, to obviously you're not going to watch the fireworks in your car, but to be able to enjoy the atmosphere of the park. Um, I've heard kind of two different scenarios. One would be that they would stay, stay near their car, which would be the thing to manage and control. And the other is they would go in the park and enjoy the, uh, the 78th park or wherever they thought uh, the best spot was. And then I have another question. All Vista Gardens, if they decide to then have their event uh, there, they'll have some cars coming in also. So um, I guess that would be need, they need to be in contact with the with us and I don't know if they're part of the 600 cars if that would become part of those or how that yeah so work. so if this were if the plan went forward with 600 cars it was vehicular only uh we would work with Alta Vista Gardens to um work out something obviously they could get into their space uh for those that don't know Alta Vista Gardens typically does a dinner and a firework with the fireworks show as a fundraiser and they would uh, very likely do that again if uh, fireworks were to occur at Brangle. So we could work with them and accommodate their cars. I know they could probably probably get somewhere between 25 and 35 cars on their own property and then we could work with them on any other cars they needed. Okay. Okay, so, so um, I guess I need to have can you can maybe read the motion restated? Does everybody understand it except for me? <laughs> Why don't we have Mr. Johnson restate it? Well, and I'm a, I'm a little confused on whether you want to allow pedestrian access or not. I see, I see so Customer Contreras wants to chime in, chime in and say something here. Hey, I just wanted to clarify, are we allowing uh, like a tailgating situation for the individuals that are coming in or are we going to explicitly say, you know, that can't happen? Uh, I'm just a little curious on on what the council uh, thinks about that. And, and I will say from a, the staff option and number two, it was to open the gates uh, in the evening hours. Uh, I had mentioned seven o'clock. And that way we could manage the park a lot better as opposed to opening it up at, at noon or, or another time and allowing delegating all day. That works for me. And, and again, on your recommendation, uh, I would say, you know, that my motion would be for no pedestrians. Okay. Councilmember Green. So my, my question is, and kind of I, I think what uh, City Manager Johnson was asking too is, so what we're saying is we would allow just 600 cars in, you know, obviously who was ever in their cars, and then we would allow those 600 people to set up throughout the park. We're not going to require staff to make little 15 by 15 areas for every single car to like park in, right? We're, we're going to have them, you know, with 600 cars, I would assume there's plenty of room for them to 
socially distance responsibly and kind of go where they like is is that am I hearing it right, Councilmember Franklin? Or do you want them to stay next to their cars, stay there for two hours, watch the fireworks, jump in their cars and drive away? I like the idea of allowing people to spread out in the park, uh, okay. grab a patch of uh, grass somewhere. Me too. And, and distance themselves from others and, you know, uh, and really enjoy the park, explore it a little bit. Okay. And I think with 600 cars that that would be something that would be easily accommodated. So, um, yeah, I'm with that. I mean, I, I get limiting the pedestrian, uh, you know, closing off the pedestrian access. I think that really cuts down the, you know, social distancing violations. And I think limiting pedestrian access also limits people from other towns coming in because if they don't have any place to park and they don't have any friends in Vista, it's going to be real tough for them to hang out in Vista and watch the fireworks. So, uh, I definitely support that, and I think it's uh, probably the safest way for our community to celebrate this particular holiday. So thank you, Councilmember Franklin, Deputy Mayor, and uh, City Manager for putting this all together. And uh, I understand your motion. Thank you, sir. And so there will be a fence around so, uh, so, that, uh, so that pedestrians can't come in the park that night. That is correct. That, day, that whole yeah, day, actually, they, they won't be able to use it all day long. If, um, yeah, there would be a fence along Vail Terrace blocking uh, pedestrian access off, and then we would also likely set up some, uh, since we'll have 600 cars coming in, obviously our traffic control will be in place for that evening, and we'll set up some barricades uh, at Williamston to make sure, with signage, to make sure pedestrians knew that. And be sure the people know they have to have a ticket to come in. They'll yes. To know that, so, Okay. One more question I have is uh, what, as far as sunset goes on the 4th of July, I'm sure you know right off the top of your head what time that typically happens. Is showing up at 7 o'clock enough time to get your family set up and situated and settled in order, or do we need to maybe open it at 6 or 6.30? I mean, if it's, uh, you know, I don't want to open it too early, but the same token, I don't want people scrambling to get set up. Sure, so. sure. the show will start at 9 or a little thereafter. So okay. it's probably likely at 8, 10, 8, 15. Okay. Um, so it'll be light, uh, obviously, for an hour, hour and 25 minutes uh, after 7 o'clock. And you think that we can accommodate shoveling all those 600 cars into their parking spots? Because if we don't open the park until right at 7, how long does it take to get 600 cars? So, so and that's a very good point. Um you know, and, and the option that I presented, we had about 250 cars, which was obviously a lot more manageable. Tickets are sold in advance, so it's easy to get them in and out. Uh, but in, in, with the 600 car uh, motion that's on the table, uh, we wouldn't be setting aside that specific parking space. So we could get cars in pretty quick, actually, okay. especially if we sold them in advance. They're not paying at the gate. They're just handing us their ticket and then moving on. And I would I would amend uh, to uh, six p.m. instead of seven p.m. because uh, sun sunset is eight o two p.m. So it only allows one hour. I don't think that's enough. I think we need two hours to get people in and, and settled. That works. I would agree to that. <clears throat> hey, so one other thing, Contreras. Sorry. Um, I just want to make sure, are we, we are um, going to be providing additional restrooms um, and are we going to be a pro uh, providing um, maybe some additional uh, hand washing stations, anything like that? Uh, that is correct. On both option two or the modified option two and option three, we would provide uh, additional restrooms. We'll provide additional hand washing stations. I think for option two, we'll probably provide 15 additional restrooms with probably six hand washing stations. Uh, and um, go from there. And Mr. Johnson, awesome. we're, Sounds great. We're going to charge twenty dollars a vehicle uh, this year. Uh, normally, we would charge fifteen in the past, but uh, since we've got one of the only shows in town, uh, we're thinking twenty dollars is an appropriate uh, cost. Yeah, that works. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. Madam Mayor. Yes, Deputy Mayor. I just want to say thank you to my colleagues on this discussion. I think it's great. I'm excited that we're going to go through with this. Um, and I really like the idea that um, because we're going to be the only city on the corridor that does it, that we open it up to our Vista residents first because it is their tax money that's paying for this. So I think um, I am very excited. I'm already in my brain picking out my spot in the park, what my picnic is going to be. So um, anyway, thank you very, very much. 
I want to know when the tickets are going on sale. I will let you know. Yeah, let us know ahead of time so we can be right there. <laughs> do, do we need a three minute recess? We need, yeah, do we need three, three minute recess? Yes. Yeah, we okay. went for public comments. Okay. Um, so, city attorney said we didn't need one. Apparently, we have some comments. Oh, okay. <laughs> We want so to make we, sure that we get everything. Yeah. Okay. Give us a moment to check and see if we have any others. Okay. okay. So we have a three minute recess. I'll see you all in three minutes. Okay, Mayor, we could go ahead and start whenever you're ready. Okay, we are now back in session and the opportunity to provide public comment on this item is now closed. Um, so do I see any other further comments before we um, vote? Do I see anybody else? Should I have a, a comment to read, Mayor? Oh, yes, you have a comment to Sorry, I forgot to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the comment is from Yesenia Reyes. Hello, my name is Yesenia. To hold the city fireworks display during this pandemic is incredibly insensitive. Unless officials are equipped to enforce the use of masks and physical distancing, a gathering of large people may result in the spread of coronavirus. Furthermore, our country and our city should be more concerned with the current political situation regarding Black Lives Matter. I do not feel comfortable at all watching a firework display that celebrates a country that has failed this people, especially minorities, time and time again. Thank you, Yesenia. And thank you. So do I have any other comments from any of our council members? Seeing none, um, we have um, the motion by um, House Member Franklin and a second by Deputy Mayor Rigby. So please um, conduct a roll call vote. 
Please you state your vote when I call your name. Mayor Ritter? Yes. Deputy Mayor Rigby? Aye. Councilmember Franklin? Aye. Councilmember Green? Aye. Councilmember Contreras? Aye. The item passes unanimously. Okay, so that ends our um, items for that. And that takes us um, right now into our oral communications. So um, do we have any oral communications this evening? Yes, I have quite a bit. Um, I'm gonna start, I have a couple um, related to cannabis that I'll read and then I'll go into um, the rest that are um, similar regarding the, the protests and some demands you've already received. So the first is from um, Barbara Gordon, dear mayor and city council member. As a youth leader for Hispanic youth group, I'm concerned with the city increasing the number of marijuana businesses. Marijuana vaping cartridges are most often sold marijuana products from the marijuana storefronts and the most manufactured product in these factories. We know vaping marijuana is the most common method to use by teens. We know that daily use by teenagers has increased in his extremely risky behavior and can lead to negative physical and mental health outcomes. These are difficult times for families, especially when we feel so responsible for keeping our teens the path of good education and job. Marijuana use, visibility and availability threatens, sabotages and adverts the lives of young people who right now are without the benefit of structure and too much free time. And we may all decide that an acceptable form of diversion of getting high. Thank you, Barbara Gordon. And I should have mentioned, sorry, that um, any comments that were received before 4 p.m. were sent out as an add to packet and that um, the opportunity to provide public comment closed when we started this section of the, the meeting. The next is from uh, Kelly McCormick. Dear Mayor and City Council members, I'm writing in response to a decision by the Planning Commission last week to approve a special use permit for a marijuana manufacturing facility and distribution center at 2465 Dogwood Way. Pot manufacturing businesses pose several problems, including the risk of explosion and fire. This facility will be ex extracting marijuana oil from plant matter to increase high THC con concentrates in edibles and vape devices. The CO2 extraction method is described as non-volatile, but is not an accurate description. CO2 must be placed under pressure during the extraction process, and if not done properly, an explosion can occur. In addition, a CO2 leak is an enclosed space can become a potential death trap for anyone caught inside. Either of these occurrences could pose a danger to employees and neighbors of the business and put business first responders in a dangerous situation. Finally, please be aware that pot manufacturing in other cities have led to lawsuits from neighboring business owners who say they've lost revenue because of noxious odors. All right, and the um, rest or uh, majority of the public comment received prior to the meeting demanded the following, and I'm gonna put those up so you can see them. So I can refer to them. Okay, so the demands were the funds used to militarize our local law enforcement be redirected towards the special social programs of the economically vulnerable in our community. The city reallocate funds to mental health services, healthcare, education, and social programs that will benefit our black, indigenous, people of color, and working class communities. The city holds an emergency town hall meeting inviting citizens of Vista to express their grievances and demands in regard to defunding and demilitarization of local law enforcement, all effective immediately. These public comments were um, from the following people. Yvette Mora, my name is Yvette Mora. These demands are important to me because I have three kids and feel like our youth deserves more educational resources. Budgets are being cut from their schools constantly. After doing research, I realized that our city has been funding our local law enforcement millions of dollars, which I think is absurd. Jay Sosa, my name is Jay, and these demands are important to me because I care deeply about my POC and especially black community here in North County. I'm outraged by the moral injustices black people have been facing in this country in regards to police brutality, racial profiling, and downright racism. Samantha Hernandez, Jeremy Hinckley. My name is Jeremy Hinckley. These demands are important to me because I have I have Native American family and we have always lived in Vista. I know how much our local POC hold up and better the community. Still, our local residents are not all treated fairly or equitably. Brianna Espinda. Caitlin Zorilla. My name is Caitlin Zorilla. I lived in Vista for 22 years and fully support the following demands written by the amazing organizers of North County for Racial Justice who are doing the hard and necessary work of pushing Vista forward. 
Now more than ever, as we simultaneously face COVID-19 and the continuation of inst institutionalized police violence against black and brown people across the county and in Vista, we call on you to support the people you were elected to serve. <clears throat> Allison Foster. My name is Allison Foster. These demands are important to me because as an educator, I know the importance of fighting systematic racism. It is not only our job, but our duty to allocate funds and resources to programs that will help BIPOC. Ian Shirley. My name is Ian Shirley. These demands are important to me because I was born and raised in Vista and I cannot stand to see the money collected from, from its citizens used against them. Vanessa Borkut. My name is Vanessa Borkut. These demands are important to me because my sister-in-law, who is a 16-year-old black woman, has been singled out in a group of white women to be asked, what is she doing here by Vista Sheriffs? The racial bias and profiling has to stop. This is important to me because I will not stand for one more of my peers having to empty their pockets and put their license registration in the visor before driving so that they don't want, so they won't get a gun pulled on them. Yet again, by a police officer, they are reaching into the gov department for the registration, as said police officer instructed them to do. It's important to me that we end white privilege, and I will use every fiber of my white privilege to do this. Alexis Lichterman. James Woodall. My name is James Woodall. These demands are important to me because I see many people passing through my place of employment who are homeless or struggling with drug addiction, many of whom have just released, been released from jail and don't seem to have a clear direction of what to do next with their lives. The police and sheriffs who pass through talk about their job like it was a game with no sense of empathy for those they arrest. What we need in the city is more support from vulnerable demographics, not more ultra-militarized police. Natasha Valoria, Liliana Villasenor, Olivia Chanka, Ellie Capone. My name is Ellie Capone. These demands are important to me because the USA has violated the Geneva Convention. Anissa, Michelle Alcantar. My name is Michelle Alcantar. Please, these demands are important to me because I am a resident of the city of Vista, a public health professional, and would like my community to be adequately served for the better. Oliver Grandland. My name is Oliver Grandland. These demands are important to me because working in the security industry, I've been given orders to call ST sheriffs to harass and remove homeless people who are not committing crimes, especially for individuals having mental health crisis where a social worker would have been able to actually assist and resolve the problem. Kendra Hines. Omar Vitia. My name is Omar Vitia. These demands are important to me because our country is under attack and these vicious tactics will no longer be tolerated. Dana Zorilla, I'm sorry, Dan Zorilla. Jenna Ross, my name is Jenna. I was born and raised in Vista. I played soccer for Vista Storm, graduated from Rancho Buena Vista High School. The majority of my family lives in the city and I want better for my hometown and its people. The overabundance of funding for law enforcement while simultaneously defunding our schools, youth programs, and healthcare is unacceptable. Bryn Zorilla. My name is Bryn Zorilla. These demands are important to me because we need to specialize our response to issues within our community. We cannot rely on police to inadequately handle situations due to their lack of experience, knowledge, and ability to calmly pursue a positive outcome for all parties involved. We need the black voices in our community to be heard, acknowledged, and supported. Carter Ross. My name is Carter. I'm a Vista citizen that wants a better community for its citizens. I grew up here, graduating from RBV and playing Vista sports. The overabundance of funding for our law enforcement while simultaneously defunding our schools, youth programs, and healthcare is inaccessible. Trey Kuch Kuchinski, Alyssa Rodriguez, Jerry Noble, Whitney Orellana, my name is Whitney Orellana. The following demands are important to me because I grew up in Vista, care about the community, and want to see, know, and can achieve real change. Hosanna Sims, my name is Hosanna Sims. These demands are important to me because this city needs to improve to become happier, a happier environment for the vulnerable. Sarah Virji, Gina Gurka, my name is Gina Gurka. These demands are important to me because I was raised in Vista and I am a minority. I'm raising my children here and want them to look at police in our community and pride. We can't let our neighbors and fabric of this community be plagued by this constant injustice. This time we hold SDSO accountable. 
Vista has the power here to make historic change and protect its residents to finally do right by people who need these services the most. Chelsea Boner. My name is Chelsea Boner. These, these demands are important to me because I am a mental health worker and I see teens struggling every day with mental health illnesses. Some living on the streets. We need more funding for social systems and less for militarization of the PD. Zoe Tanner. My name is Zoe and these demands are important to me because I am disappointed with the city's apparent disregard for racial injustices occurring in our city, community and beyond. I would like to see a discussion regarding what the city of Vista plans to do to address police brutality and other forms of systematic racism and oppression against our black, indigenous and people of color, color communities. Danny de Agrosa, my name is Danny de Agrosa. These demands are important to me because I live in a mental health, with a mental health disorder and in my 20 plus years living in Vista, I've never felt safe in the presence of local law enforcement. Janissa Soracino. Kendra Lee, my name is Kendra Lee. These demands are important to me because public services are being defunded because I am a local to Vista and have seen firsthand the consequences of militarized police and the dire need for money, more funding for social programs. Jessica Martinez, my name is Jessica Martinez of Vista, California, Vista California's 49th district. These demands are important to me because a mem as a member of the community, I care deeply for the safety and well-being of the members of this community, especially the black, Latino, and homeless population who are continually targeted and justly unjustly killed by the Vista Police Department. I have now lived in Vista for four years, and since my time living here, I have learned of many situations where Vista Police Department used unnecessary force on the members of our community, especially the members of color. The Vista Police Department has not been held accountable for these actions. I'm a nursing student and devoted to committing my life to keep our community safe and healthy. I demand our city defund the Vista Police Department and work towards enacting better social solutions and programs and take a stance in dismantling the institutionalized racism in Vista that continue to oppress and harm the black and Latino individuals in our city. The, police, the Vista Police Department must be held accountable on their actions immediately. Kelly Valentine. My name is Kelly, Kelly Valentine and the following demands are important to me as, as a current concerned Vista resident. Katie Knapp, Brooke Farnham. My name is Brooke Farnham and the following demands are important to me and should be important to everyone because we need to build communities that have the most resources and give equal opportunity to everyone. The safest cities in the world don't have the most cops. They have the most resources. Isla Humeras. My name is Isla Humeras. These demands are important to me because I am a resident of Vista who has been personally affected by the corrupt criminal justice system. Hannah Arp. My name is Hannah Arp. This is important to me because there are voices not being heard and there is murdering of, profiling of, lack of human rights for some of my brothers and sisters out there. Anne Marie Zarilla. My name is Anne Marie Zarilla. These demands are important to me because all people are created equal and should be treated equally. Sean Damon. My name is Sean Damon. These demands are important to me because I want Vista to be a thriving community with balanced resources. Josephine Hansen. As a city of Vista, I believe that it is your job as city council to listen to us when we say the militarization and overfunding of police do not do nothing to protect the city. What the city really needs is a budget for people who have the services they need to be safe. I ask you to listen to, as a to us as a community and not serve and protect only the upper class in our community. As for all these things, be effective immediately. Vanessa Alvarez, Florence Chung. My name is Florence. These demands are important to me because BIPOC and all allies are facing excessive and unprovoked police brutality all over the nation. This is evidence that shows up day after day all across the US and makes known how police do not serve the people they are sworn to protect. This doesn't even include the fact this is happening in the context of global pandemic, where the unemployment rate has hit 14.7%, where people are struggling to pay rent and where people don't have health insurance. Why is the nation was unable to deliver the necessary PPE for health workers when police show up in full riot gear with militarized equipment? We are still funding the police when they brutalize the public and when these funds can be better invested in our community and local services that serve the community's well-being. Nicole Zavaleta, Anne Gabriel Velasquez, Liz Baird. My name is Liz Baird. These, these demands are important to me because I'm a mother of two adult community members and we own property in Vista. I was actually raised in Vista and attended elementary school, middle school, and high school in Vista. 
I'm a proud Vista High graduate, go Panthers. Our school has been grossly underfunded for years now. It's been heartbreaking to see this continue to happen. Stephanie Kuczynski, Isabella Castillo, Peter Kuczynski, Jaden Joyce, Kaylin Booker, Giovanni Martinez. In addition to the state demands, I would like the city of Vista to adopt the 10 policies of Campaign Zero, which are to end broken windows policing, have community oversight, limit the use of force, independently investigate and prosecute, have community representation, have police body cameras, defund police training, end for-profit policing, demilitarize the police, and have better police unions. Michaela Agrella. My name is Michaela Agrella. I'm a resident of Vista and want to voice my concerns and demands, especially in my most direct community. I want to share that I am outraged by San Diego City Council's vote to increase San Diego Police Department's budget by 27 million, especially as unprecedented amount of phone calls and comments poured in demanding the opposite. Now is the time to acknowledge our role in the failure of our justice system, first and foremost, the police. Lizette Jimenez. My name is Lizette Jimenez. These demands are important to me because as a Latinx member of the community, I am personally witnessed and lived the consequences of this budget. Let's create a better community for future generations. Michael Carpen, Adriana Junko, Echo Burt. My name is Echo Burt. These demands are important to me because I love my community and want to see it thrive. I want everyone within it who is struggling to have better accessible resources to assist with the quality of life, which means allocating funds to more responsible programs than police, which have done considerable harm to our community and time and again proved ineffective, incompetent and in incom complete violation of our constitutional and human rights. Hilary LaBeouf, my name is Hilary LaBeouf. These demands are important to me because the safety and longevity of our community is at stake. Vista is a diverse and vibrant community, but not all residents have equal access to basic services, often due to their race. We must protect and uplift our non-white residents. Angela Herrera, my name is Angela Herrera. These demands are important to me because I have noticed a trend of young black men getting pulled over in my neighborhood. I find it disturbing that I have felt the need to pull over and watch just to make sure they stay safe. That's right, I am watching. I'm concerned for the safety of these men and for the lasting impact this has on our city as a whole. We must do better. I implore you all in positions of power to step up and do better. Maria Morales, Brandy Lacey. My name is Brandy Lacey. I'm a registered voter in the community. I've listed demands below that are very important to me and the community. The following demands are extremely important to me because I value the lives of our black, indigenous, and POC neighbors. The systematic racism in America needs to end its 500 year run. History is watching us. It is time to make things right. Megan Summerlin, Crystal Gonzalez. My name is Chris Crystal Gonzalez. These demands are important to me because as a teacher who has a passion for working with children, I cannot stand idly by while my students of color are most affected by systematic biases enforced by local law enforcement. The funds used to militarize our local enforcement should be allocated to education where it will really make a difference or social programs for the community. Matilda Hull, Marcella, Daniel Long. My name is Daniel Long. These demands are important to me because recent events have made it apparent the law enforcement takes advantage of unnecessary increases in funding and does not use these funds to benefit these communities they are meant to protect. The funds used to militarize our local enforcement should be allocated to education where it really makes a difference or social programs for the community. Alexis Flores, Eric S. My name is Eric. I'm a Vista resident who is half Latino with Asperger's syndrome. I bring this up because as lucky as I am to have been diagnosed at an early age, that is not the case for a vast amount of autistic people in the black and Latino community. Compared to predominantly white communities, there are there are 65% less autism diagnosis in Latino communities and 19% less diagnosis in black communities. Due to socioeconomic disadvantages, POC communities are not given easy access to healthcare, social services, special education, and mental health services. People who are disabled or mentally ill are much more likely to be targeted by police than those who aren't, with approximately 50% of all fatal police shootings are at people with some sort of disability. The risk is even higher for those in POC communities due to racial profiling. Instead of policing these people, they should be getting the proper help they need and live within communities where they can be safe and free from police brutality. 
Mary Jo Poole. Dear council members, I have followed the city and events about law enforcement in Vista since 2006. Every year, even though crime rates are low, you increase the budget for the sheriffs. Unless it's changed, which I doubt, every year you approve the use of extra money for the sheriff's department through a grant for the junior deputy program. Money that can be used for something other than introducing our youth to more policing, weapons, how to hogtie people, and encouraging them to be the eyes for their neighborhoods. Last time I saw a captain at council, we, he provided info on the number of service calls to shock us without any explanation of those numbers, mean and all just sat in awe with little discussion other than blind praise. If not okay, to, it's not okay to spend 25 million a year of tax money without proper analysis. Since 2006, the community has asked multiple times for involvement for a city advisory panel and the council has done nothing but kick down the, the idea down the road. That road is coming to an end. Amanda Hinderling, her comments have been summarized from a voicemail. Um, she says she's been working as a student worker at the North County District Attorney's Office since July 2018, working in victim restitution. She and her boss have been the only two working on the issue during her time there. She stated that an, in, that an inexcusable amount of money is spent on the current system, which continues to fail to find justice for victims due to a horribly designed legal system and biased enforcement, which imprisons drug abusers and other minor offenders and fails to provide proper rehabilitation. The legal system does not help victims and is unfair and unjust. The public is demanding that you cease funding law enforcement and instead fund needed services. Liz Lee Garcia, my name is Liz Lee Garcia. These demands are important to me because I believe that the police department's funds are insane. From the bottom of my heart, we could use the money to help our community, help the youth, put into programs that benefit us, the children and everyone. We need change and I feel like this is a small step towards it. Mitzi Ruelas, Tatsy Torres, Leanna Cortez. My name is Leanna Cortez. These demands are important to me as they put Vista in the right direction towards active change. We cannot stand idle or wait, but instead should act as an example of how we can make effective and meaningful change in regards to the police brutality and power hold so we often see throughout our country. Sophie Blake, I am making these demands because I believe in fighting for racial equity and defunding the police while building up social support systems. In the past weeks, I've been ter tear gassed multiple times and seen the police tear gas and shoot rubber bullets at innocent people, including my sister. This is unacceptable and reform is not enough. We must reallocate funds to build up social support and take care of our community. Avila Rosas, my name is Avila Rosas. These demands are important to me because I care about the community and the future of it. I believe that this list of demands will better the community that I love. Sugili Cervantes, my name is Sugili Cervantes. These demands are important to me because the city I live in needs to fervently implement police practices and support all of the community members and not solely a small percentage. Liliana Orellano, my name is Liliana Orellano. These demands are important to me because I think we should allocate funds to our youth by providing more programs, helping the homeless, mentally ill, and our elderly community. Tracy Klim, Karina Gon Gonzalez. My name is Karina Gonzalez, and these demands are important to me because as an educator, I believe that social care is fundamental to the improvement of a community. I believe that in order to be equitable, we must actively provide services that alleviate the problems seen in our community. The funds used to militarize our local law enforcement should be allocated to education where it, will, where it really makes a difference or social programs for the community. Maddie Frith, Nichelle Brown. My name is Nichelle Brown. These demands are important to me because my family has experienced discrimination and violence through the Vista Police and San Diego Sheriff. Lucas Goodman. To whom it may concern, my name is Chamini Delana. Delana. Dayalon, I apologize for the pronunciation. These demands are important to me because as a native San Diegan, I witnessed the militarization of our police force and the harmful effects it is having on our communities. I demand that the funds be used for our local law enforcement be reallocated towards social programs for the most vulnerable in our community. We need to be investing in mental health services, healthcare and education that will benefit our working class communities of all races. The city is holding an emergency town hall meeting to express their grievances and it has become clear this past month that police brutality is an issue in San Diego. Please listen to the concerned citizens of San Diego and set an example for the rest of the country. Aaron Nakasone. 
My name is Erin Nagasone. I'm a resident in District 4 of Vista. I work as a librarian in Oceanside. I attended the peaceful protests on Saturday, June 6th. I was so encouraged and galvanized by the amount of people and support we received by cars driving by. I was very happy to see and hear your peer, Karina Contreras, at the rally, but it was disappointing that no other officials were present to talk with a crowd that was so eager to listen. If you want to show support for our community, you as a representative of VISTA need to step up and speak out. Listen to our city and create change. You have the power to do so. Invest VISTA's tax dollars back into the community through social services and education instead of towards militarizing the county sheriff's department. Hold an emergency town hall meeting so that residents in the city can have an open dialogue to discuss what can be done to move VISTA and San Diego County towards equity and social justice. Black and brown lives matter. Thank you. Connor Gresset. Hello, Vista City Council. My name is Connor Gresset. I have lived in, and worked in Vista for eight of my 24 years. I'm calling the council members to begin educating them, them, I'm calling on council members to begin educating themselves on how to defund the police department and start allocating funds to the economically vulnerable in our community. Public safety starts with housing, healthcare, access, and healthy food, education, public transportation, mental health services, small business, and arts opportunities. When the people have their basic needs met, the community can thrive and the need for police department diminishes. The police actively oppress so many of our community members and the time has come for change. Thousands of your constituents gathered and marched peacefully from the Civic Center to Vista Creek Park to stand against police brutality and call for the defunding of the police department. They did this with an organized community security team without, a co co without coordinating with the police. Um, and then um, Jocelyn Aliers, dear Vista City Council, I'm a longtime Vista resident, a strongly committed to ensuring that our city is a safe and supportive environment for everybody who lives here. Because of that, I am deeply grateful to the young members of our community who have taken the lead in helping us to articulate ways to make that happen. It is crit of critical importance as a city council take immediate action to create a more just and equitable city for all of us. These actions should include, but not be limited to the following. Redirect funds from law enforcement towards social programs which support the health and well-being of those who are economically vulnerable in our community and towards mental health services, healthcare education, and social programs that benefit black, indigenous, people of color, and working class communities. Immediately hold an emergency town hall meeting to invite and carefully listen to and address Viston's concerns about policing in our community. Most sincerely, Jocelyn Hilliers. Olivia Thomas, my name is Olivia and I am writing to urge the council to meet the following demands. First, the funds to used to militarize our local law enforcement must be redirected towards social programs for the economically vulnerable in our community immediately. Second, the city needs to reallocate funds to mental health services, healthcare, education, and social programs that will benefit our black, indigenous, people of color, and working class communities. Kira Cardoza. My name is Kira Cardoza. These demands are important to me because the city reallocates funds to mental health services, healthcare, education, and social programs that will benefit our black, indigenous, people of color, and working class communities effective immediately. Natalina Blake. My name is Natalina Blake. I'm writing in to demand the funds used to militarize our police be redirected to education, housing, mental health services, and other institutions that truly protect and serve the people. I also demand that the city of Vista hold an emergency town hall meeting where people be able to voice their concerns and solutions in regards to the demilitarization and defunding of police. Please show your residents that you care and that you stand with them during this time. Hello, my name is Sahari Sandoval. I've been a member of the Vista community for years, lived here since I was little. Today, I'm writing you, urging you all to please stop funding for the police department, which is not even our own. Reallocate these funds to better serve our community. <clears throat> we need more funding for the arts, especially in schools. Most of these music and arts programs have been cut. There are more productive ways to help our community and it's not giving more money and weapons to the police. The San Diego Sheriff's Department has done nothing but terrorize and harass our community and our streets. <clears throat> we need more de-escalation techniques, not more guns on the streets. More programs to help our youth and most vulnerable populations. If we don't see the changes happening, we'll vote you out of office. You're here to serve your, our community and we can find someone who will actually stand up for us. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Dear Vista City Council, I'm a longtime Vista resident strongly committed to ensuring that our city is a safe and supportive environment for everybody who lives here. Because of that, I am deeply grateful to the young members of our community who have taken the lead in helping us to articulate ways to make that happen. It is of critical importance to the city council to take immediate action to create a more just and equitable city for all of us. These actions should include, but not limited to, redirect funds from local law enforcement towards social programs which support the health and well-being of those who are economically vulnerable in our community, and towards mental health services, healthcare education, and social programs that benefit Black, Indigenous, people of color, and working class communities. Immediately hold an emergency town hall meeting and invite and carefully listen to and address this concerns about policing in our community. Most sincerely, Teresa Allers. The next is from Jaden Sterling Randall. City council members, I want to thank council member Contreras for participating in the North High Peaceful March that was held on Saturday here in Vista. Thank you for being here to be part of the conversion of change. My husband and I want to participate as well. However, my husband has cancer, so his health, we were unable to. The entire council was invited via email from North County for racial justice. In the email, they stated your participation is not only welcome, but is expected as representative of our community. As elected officials of the city of Vista, you represent the voice of our community. These protests have been happening globally of the magnitude that has never been seen before. The protests are occurring in all 50 states and on every continent except Antarctica. My question to the rest of the council is why did you not participate to be part of the conversation for change? What does that say when you were all invited and chose not to participate in at least the discussion that preceded the march? Everyone has their own personal opinion of what is currently happening in our country, and that opinion is typically based on their own life experiences. <clears throat> Next is from Katie Melendez. Dear Vista City Council, I am a lifelong Vista and a social worker. Over the weekend, I was able to join our community for a peaceful march against police brutality. Our voices are clear. We need a new approach to community safety. People of color, those who are homeless, and other disenfranchised neighbors are especially vulnerable to harassment and excessive use of force by law enforcement. It endangers the community to be silent and passive on this issue. The city of Vista can and must address these issues on a local level. Please commit to the following actions. Include the community in the discussions by hosting a town hall for residents to express their experiences with local policing. Invest in the community to prevent crime and increase spending for programs to address mental health, homelessness, poverty, and well-being. Implement personal, personnel changes for crisis calls related to sexual violence, domestic violence, mental health, and homelessness. Replace armed law enforcement officers with trained mental and behavioral health professionals. Thank you for doing the work to represent our community by making these changes. Carol Jeffries. Hello, council members. I'm dismayed at your silence concerning police brutality and racial injustice. I'm so disappointed that you did not make a statement standing up for your community, denouncing systematic racism and promising reforms for policing. We all need to work together toward this positive change. Why can't we focus more on our, of our budget on helping people and making our city for the community instead of for the developers? A number of months ago, when the idea of hiring a park ranger came up, instead we hired another sheriff deputy. I don't need a law enforcement officer to help me at the park. That's a different job than a park ranger. We need more helpers in our community. Mental health workers, park rangers, coaches, homeless outreach, social workers, counselors, community organizers. Police will always have a job, but they don't need to be the biggest, biggest presence in our community. <clears throat> Tony Mill. Mill? Hello, my name is Tony Milk. I have a public comment on a Janina one. I, will, um, I am writing to demand that the city council adopt a people's budget that prioritizes community well-being and redirects funding away from the police. We are in the midst of widespread upheaval over the systematic violence of policing. I will no longer accept empty gestures and suggest a reform. I'm demanding my voice be heard now and that real change be made but to the way the city allocates its resources. Support for communities in need is necessary now more than ever. I demand that the city council defund the Vista Police Department. I demand that the city allocate, reallocate funds to education, mental health services, healthcare, and social programs that will benefit our black, indigenous, people of color, and working class communities. I demand a budget that supports community well-being rather than empowers the police forces that tear it apart. I demand that the city hold an emergency town hall meeting inviting citizens of Vista to express their grievances and demands regarding the defunding and demilitarization of local law enforcement. Hannah, uh, for Hannah Pryor. My name is Hannah Pryor and I grew up in Vista, but currently live in Berkeley where I, where I attend school. 
Counselors, you and I both love VISTA. We both have value and we both value public safety in our community. With this in mind, I encourage you to consider new strategies. The police force is no longer the best way to ensure public safety. We have seen mass protests against the systematic racism inherent in the, to the policing system in America in the past few weeks, including right in our own town. Furthermore, we understand the value of behavioral health and rental assistance programs in increasing community welfare, which will in turn promote public safety. To be more responsive to our community's needs and to address police brutality, I strongly encourage the City of Vista to consider revising its budget, investing from the police budget, and into community programs. Thank you for your time. Amy Hanna. Hello, City Council. I grew up working at a local business in Vista under my parents. My dreams were bigger than the city, and I eventually got accepted into UCSB and earned a dual degree in 2017. I now work with the administration at UCSB. However, I cherish Vista and the community services that are available to our members. Even so, I think it will be valuable to reallocate a majority of the police budget back into our communities in order to engage the, a stronger sense of accountability, reassurance, safety, and security. You have been you have seen what this is going in the, on in the world. I have seen too many customers come to the shop constantly getting viciously looped back into the incarceration system. No, the answer is to help and uplift our members towards greatness by providing housing, food, shelter, because this means that you care about them and want to motivate our largely Latino youth to be amazing people. Cops should not be at middle school campuses. Not to mention, I also worked at Ranch Minerva Middle School and the police presence was only always hurtful to our students. Arleth Flores Aprecio. Dear council member, mayor and council members, my name is Arleth Flores Aprecio, a six year resident in District 1. The city of Vista needs to acknowledge the death of George Floyd, Verona Taylor, Amud Arbery, and many more unnamed victims having their lives taken away at the hands of police officer. Here in Vista, the lives of Jonathan Cornell and Sergio Week were taken by Vista Police Department Sheriff Chris Villawin. Villanueva. I'm urging the city of Vista to recognize Black Lives Matter movement and redirect funds given to the San Diego Sheriff's Department to mental health services, healthcare education, and social programs that will benefit our Black, Indigenous, Latinx, people of color, and working class communities in Vista. I understand that changing policy is hard, but remember you serve the people of Vista. We elect you, and if our demands are not met, you may not be representing Vista coming in the next election term. Please coordinate with your staffers and create a policy plan to present to the public about defunding the contract with the San Diego Sheriff's Department. I implore you to people of color Vista are tired and angry. Okay, and the following people left voicemails um, asking for the demands you see on the screen. Lucas Goodman, Jessica Mercado, Max Friend, Alfredo, Savannah Addison, Michael Wessels, Desmond Morente, Patrick Ryan, Aja Sebron, Corelli, Valeria Rodriguez, Corinne Magapuge. I have a public comment on non agenda item. I would not, uh, oh. I respectfully sorry, request the city council to reallocate funds that typically would be spent towards law enforcement to essential assistance programs that will lift up and strengthen the residents of Vista. I ask the city to reallocate funds to emergency services, healthcare needs. I understand the cost of one riot gear outfit for an officer it would equal 31 PPE outfits for nurses and essential healthcare workers. Please consider the needs of your residents right now and please prioritize the needs of these residents before we increase policing. At the very least, keep the policing line item budget as it is and do not increase it for 2021. And instead again, please prioritize our residents. Okay, and then we have additional emails that were received, again, stating the um, demands you see on your screen. Lucy Omar, Maria Morales, Sabrina Cabrera, Alexis Martinez, Dustin Buckles, Matthew Barker, Navasha Moon, Eric DeHaro, Sandy Milk, Camille Gibbett. These demands are important to me because I am a Vista resident, homeowner, and care about the health, safety, and well being of my neighbors and colored community. Christian Rivera, these demands are important to me because Vista is made up primarily of minority families. We need to help. 
who need, we need the help of the city to thrive, to see our children thrive, to repair the injustice of our community, to fund the welfare of this beautiful city. This money should be go towards education. Please help us, please help us be heard. Christian Scholler, these demands are important to me. It is vital to me that my friends, neighbors, and anyone else in this community and nationwide, worldwide, deserve to be treated fairly regardless of skin color or any other aspect of their identity. Rebecca Kaczynski, these demands are important to me because I want our funds redirected. Cielo Chavez, these demands are important to me because areas such as community and housing development, as well as environment and land use could better serve the citizens of the county that are underprivileged. Julie Negroni, these demands are important to me because I have family members who have been arrested by the Vista Sheriff Department when we called because they were suicidal. Now that family member has more trauma than ever before, and our family has none, has no one to call when they are suicidal to help them. We feel hopeless and stuck between my family member being assaulted by police or killing themselves. Patrick Ryan, these demands are important to me because I've experienced police brutality in North County. Jorge Osorio, these demands are important to me because the needs of the community are not being met. The city council must and will enact the following demands. We do not want we reform, we want fundamental change. Tamara Tharp, these demands are important to me because I care about the health of our community. And as of now, communities are not being served properly by funding and militarizing police departments. Trevor Salazar, these demands are important to me because everyone in my community deserves the opportunity to thrive without fear of a system that works to terrorize them. Yesenia Reyes, this is important to me because I have never felt protected or helped by the Vista Sheriff's Department in the entire time I have lived here. Erica Mills, and these demands are important to me because I am sick of being human, of seeing human beings treated unequally to their, to their race and socioeconomic background, neither of which they have control over. Yesenia Garcia, these demands are important to me because my family is affected by it. Gabrielle Estrada, these demands are important to me because I believe our community doesn't get all the help that it could be getting. Anna Sorina, these demands are important to me because I strongly believe that focusing more on the community needs such as healthcare, education, and services catering to the residents who need it the most are the most effective ways to peaceful and harmonious progress in our community. With the current status quo of the police force within the city, black indigenous, people of color and working class communities will never be able to feel safe or welcome in the city. While I understand the importance of the protection and security of the city with the police force, I believe that the trust between public servants who serve the community and the people it serves are more effective and will not be achieved without demilitarization of local law enforcement. Rebecca Estrada, I'm a Vista resident of over 20 years. That completes the public comment, Mayor. Oh, there you go. Okay. okay, no, I'm unmuted. Okay, um, thank you everybody for the public comments. There was a lot of them. We all back, back to back to work. He's back um, on the screen. Okay, back on the screen again. Okay, so then that will lead us to our any council remarks. So, um, any of our council want to make remarks before we adjourn our meeting? So I don't see anybody waving at me. Oh, Councilmember Contreras. Um, I just want to thank my colleagues for uh, the discussion we had today. And uh, as usual, thank uh, my coworkers, staff, uh, for uh, all the hard work that you put in. And, um, you know, I want to thank the public uh, for taking an interest in uh, our city budget. Um, I definitely am hearing a lot from my constituents um, regarding this issue. And, um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to putting together uh, at least unilaterally a uh, town hall to review some of these um, issues just to hear more from the public. But uh, thank you again uh, to everybody who provided um, their comments, their thoughts. Uh, and I look forward to uh, many more future discussions. I'm really glad that uh, uh, we were able to get some fireworks for um, our residents here. I know uh, my family's excited. Uh, so with that, um, 
I just want to say again, thank you to everybody. Uh, you know, I'm listening, and um, I will be here uh, to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation uh, with anybody who uh, wants to do so. Um, other than that, I hope everybody has a, a really good night. This calls member Franklin. I just want to thank all those who took the time to submit their, their comments and their thoughts. Uh, certainly our thoughts uh, are with the, the family of George Floyd. Um, we all uh, want to see justice done. Um, we all believe uh, that we can do better as a society. Uh, we all believe uh, that there are systemic problems that need to be addressed. Uh, and I think all of us are committed to continuing to work to address those. Um, it's a conversation that since I've been a member of the council, I have actively worked to advance. Um, and I'm proud of the work I've done in that regard. Um, you know, there's a, there's a great uh, Venn diagram uh, on the internet that, uh, you know, shows the uh, the, the circle of, uh, of people who are outraged about what happened to George Floyd. Uh, and it also shows a circle of people who support our police and our sheriff's deputies uh, and explains that uh, you can both support our first responders, our police, our sheriff's department, and the work that they do, uh, recognizing that the vast majority of them are good men and women who serve their community honorably and at the same time, uh, be outraged about what happened, uh, what has happened in other examples, and demand that we do better. Uh, but I, I do want to say that as much as we recognize that some things need to change, we also recognize and uh, we honor all those uh, who serve our community honorably, uh, those who do the right thing, who put themselves in harm's way to protect us every day. We thank them for their service. Okay. Anybody else? If, if I, don't, I don't see anybody else. I have. Um, I just have some um, comments here at the end that were um, about. This is just general um, announcements. That, um, this is um, this is a good thing. Residents can safely dispose of our um, personal documents that need shredding at the free shred event. That's on Saturday. That's this Saturday, June thirteenth, from nine to noon at the Vista Civic Center. Electronic waste will also be accepted. So that if you have stuff in your garage or you have things like that, that is an important thing. So please check online at cityofvista.com for more information on that. And then one other thing is um, join this year's annual Creek to Bay cleanup event, which will take place remotely on Saturday, June the 20th. Volunteers can register online at creektobay.org and the city will provide trash bags and gloves to the participants. So those are just the two um, comments that I have. How about our city manager? Do you have any comments tonight? No, I don't. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, how about our city attorney? Do you have any comments tonight? Thank you, Mayor. No, I do not. Okay, city clerk? No comments. Thank you, Mayor. You see no further comment? Joe Green, or did you have any comment? Looking like you want to do so, say something. Okay, yeah, I just wanted, <laughs> I didn't realize those were our closing comments. I just wanted to thank my council for their work, thank my colleagues, uh, Councilmember Franklin and Councilmember Contreras for their amazing words. Also thank our community for sending in the comments. And uh, I just wanted to uh, close my comments tonight with just saying the names of the three victims that this kind of whole movement has started. And I know it's gonna cause some reform in our sheriff's department, um, but like Councilmember uh, Franklin said, um, I am in that group as well that supports our sheriffs, understands the outrage, and wants some change to happen. And I think as leaders, it uh, behooves all of us to make sure that some change happens. So with that, George Floyd, Brianna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So thank you, everyone, with, uh, with that. I will thank you, everyone, for listening and, and hanging in there tonight, and I will um, adjourn our meeting. We are adjourned.